Welcome to Break Free From Corporate, the only podcast dedicated to bringing you business success secrets from leading entrepreneurs with one thing in common. They left the corporate world, became their own boss, and are now living incredible lives. To access previous and all future episodes, visit BreakFreeFromCorporate.com and subscribe today. Hi, everyone. This is Gavin Sequero here from Break Free From Corporate and bringing you another exciting podcast again. And um, I'm really excited about our guest today because um, she's a lady I met uh, through mutual friends, through mutual contacts, through our network. And the great thing about uh, Amy, who you'll get to hear from in a second, is she has done so many different things in her working life. She's a mother, she's um, started a business, she's been in business for several years, and you know, we're going to hear all the stories on how she got started, uh, her journey, the trials, the, the ups, the downs, all that sort of stuff, and I hope you guys are going to take some notes because I think we're all going to learn a thing or two from Amy. So I just want to do a quick welcome to Amy. Amy, are you there? Can you hear us? Good morning, Gavin. How are you? Very good. Very, very happy to have you on the call, so thanks for being with us. No, thank you. And thank you for um, inviting me to uh, have this breakfast conversation with you and your um, audience. Um, so looking forward to it. Fantastic. Great. Well, you know, as, as a lot of our listeners know, uh, we talk to people uh, all the time that have been involved in the corporate world. They've worked for someone else. They've worked either for a large organization, whether it's private, public, it doesn't really matter. But they've worked mm -hmm. in organizations and companies and they've been, you know, gone through the, the normal career um, progression. Mm -hmm. And at some point, something flicked like a switch went off and they decided mm -hmm. to go into business. And I'm really interested to find out how, firstly, what, what did you do? And then how did you make that switch? So tell us a little bit about, you know, what you used to do in your formative years, you know, prior to being in business. Like what, now how did you, like, what was your, what was your background in corporate? Sure. Sure. Oh gosh. I did a lot of things, Gavin, you know, um, <laughs> gee, you know, I, I actually started working when I was 13. 13, right? So I, I kind of stumbled into customer service. But in terms of like formal employment, gee, I've, I've worked as for GE Finance mm -hmm. for about a few years, you know, and I was doing quite well in Australasia. And I've also worked in um, financial planning. I worked in investment. I've also worked in for government, mainly the community sector. And wow. at some time, I've also done um, performing arts as well. So yeah. I've done, you know, done like, a, lot, I've, I've a bit of everything. You know, yeah. they say that jack of all trades and master of none. Yeah, yeah no, I know that. I know that feeling. Yeah. Yes. Yep. But, you oh. know, I, I'm grateful, grateful for all the experience. But, you know, as I've picked up, um, you know, new employment, new experiences, you get to understand, well, I get to understand what works for me and what doesn't work for me. Yeah, yeah. And that's the key, isn't it? It's really, at the end of the day, we're all on this journey and we, we just mm -hmm. keep trying to find what is best for us and where we, where we can, right. I guess, you know, resonate. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that takes courage. Yes. It does. It definitely takes courage. I mean, you even mentioned you worked for, was it Crown? I think. Um, yes, <laughs> that, that was just crazy fun time. You know, when I was studying my master's and, you know, as a poor student, you know, you do whatever you can <laughs> just to pull through. But that, that gave me a new perspective on, on entertainment and, and seeing the humanity in a different light. Yeah. Definitely. That yeah. was a very exciting time as well, I guess, in your, you know, while you were studying and, and as a student and, and <sighs> you know, just working to, to pay the bills and, you know, but, Trying different things, I guess. That's right. That's right. And and you know what I found is we all do things for different reasons. Yeah. But at the end of the day, is um willing to question, willing to question each step, what works for you and what doesn't. And sometimes I always say we never we can never get it wrong. When we try something that doesn't work, we go okay, we'll find out something that we don't like. Is there something that we do like? Yeah. And life is such an adventure. Life's got to be enjoyed. Well, that hence I'm going to business and do my own thing. <laughs> well, we're going to get into that in a sec, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm always fascinated why people make that shift. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, you and I have made that shift from working for someone else or working for an employer, whether it's a large organization or not, and, and then wanting to be your own boss. Because I know that 
that's not an easy journey. And that definitely comes with its own set of challenges. And, you know, yeah. sometimes people think, oh, it'd be great to be your own boss. But boy, sometimes it's a lot of hard work in the early days. Would you agree? Absolutely. If I knew how much, how many exciting adventures you become as your own business owner, you kind of question twice, but yeah. no regret. I'm having a time of my life. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, so tell, tell me, um, Amy, now obviously you started off, um, you know, in your, your working career, you, you would have studied for it. You would have qualified for certain things and, and, you know, how, how many, like how long were you in the, the workplace before, you, you know, you decided, I really want to try my own thing. Was it like a couple yeah. of years into it or was it like 10 years? Like were you in, were you working for a long time before you know, the life? So formerly 20 and I started my business when I was 27. So seven years with trying all different things. And then one day I made a discovery hmm. um, that I'm just highly unemployable. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 like, I like to do my own thing. And I don't think I can find something that fits my personality and my lifestyle. So that's really, <laughs> that's really interesting you say that because I know a lot of entrepreneurs or business people that have, after being in business for so long, they, mm. they, you know, they all joke about it. They go, I don't think I'm ever going to be employable again because I've, I've just, you know, I just need to be able to do my own thing. What, what is it about your doing your own thing that, you, you believe makes you unemployable? Is it just you don't, you never, well, you decided you just didn't want to have to work for someone else? Like, what was the driving force for you to want to be your own uh, boss? Yes. You know what is my driving force, even for 17 years mm. and even now? And now when I reflect back, it has always been my core value is doing something I love. If it's no fun, no play. And how I got into business is, it's really by default in some way, um, thank you to my husband. Uh, you know, um, he was in the corporate world as well. He was in IT and he's been working in IT for some time. Yes. And throughout his um, university years, he, he worked in a Mexican restaurant and it was, it was part of his hobby. And then one day, and I specifically remember this day, it was a Friday, oh my gosh, June, you know, I, I just had a newborn a few months old and we just had the mortgage yeah. and he came then he came home and he said I mean I'm done <laughs> so I'm there so I've just had you know this total and, and you know as a spouse as a partner there is nothing more painful but at the same time nothing more in, um, powerful when you see the person that you love to say they are done you, you almost can see the spark has lost in their eyes Mm. And said, "Well, what do you want? What do you want to do?" He goes, and "Where do you go to from here? here?" Yeah, where go to from here? And he said, "I'm going to start this. I'm going to start a restaurant." And at that time, I don't know. I I, I had no hesitation yeah. because at that at that moment, I just said, "Okay, what's the worst thing could happen? Yeah. Lose a house. That's it. That's it." And I think one of the common, you know, mis not mistakes, thought many people stop from moving to the next step is, gosh, if I take this step, what am I going to lose? Whereas a business owner, an entrepreneur, it's like, what can I gain? And from a human being perspective, what will make me happy? Yeah, right? I like so it was a no-brainer. And I said, okay, let, let's do it. And so, and that was the very beginning. And when we started, well, actually, Alan started, I, I, I made it very clear. And one thing that, that works really well between Alan and I, even though we've been married for 20 years, been in business for 17 years, we wow. keep our boundaries very clear. When we're in business, we wear our business hat. When we're in the family, we, we put the business hat aside. Right. That's why it works so beautifully. And yeah, so at the beginning, he went, he went into business in hospitality with um, another business partner. And then a few years later, you know, things change as, you know, as things as do. As it does. Yep. Yeah, as it does, naturally, you know. Right? Mm -hmm. And I came into the scene, uh, you know, supposedly supporting because I have no background in hospitality, Gavin. So it was all self-taught. <laughs> yeah. You know, you kind of work around, you make mistakes, you know, and you learn. I guess you were just learning on the job, weren't you? Really? Yeah. 
I was remember I was embarrassed to say I was a business owner in, in the early years because I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> but what I loved, what I loved was people in creating things. Yeah. And that was the and that complement Alan's love for food. Yeah, but even though we had our business for 17 years, I reckon our business model changed three times. Oh, I'm sure yeah. it would. So, wow, so you're in the restaurant business now. You, you guys run a Mexican restaurant. Yes. That's, that's mm -hmm. brilliant. That, that's fantastic. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, I mean, so a couple of things you said earlier, I, I was just jotting down some notes. You said that, you know, mm -hmm. um, while you had an, uh, like a, a very young kid, a young toddler, you know, suddenly your husband comes home one day and goes, I'm done and I'm going to go into this business. And your, your first thing is like, yep, yeah, why not? Um, whereas a lot of people would, that would be the, the stopping point right there. Or a lot of people would actually mm -hmm. not even take that kind of a decision because it would be, mm -hmm. in, you know, too risky. Um, mm -hmm. and now you and I get it because obviously mm -hmm. being in business, you kind of have that mindset of what, what do I have to gain, which I, I really like that you shared. Um, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, unfortunately, Amy, you know, even that are listening to this right now that want to get into business or want to do something that they, they have a, a dream or a passion about, they're just scared and nervous and not sure whether to take that first step. And maybe it's a simple thing of working out, well, what have I got to lose? Um, in, in terms of writing it down and going, if that's the worst thing that could happen, maybe it's not so bad. And now what have I got to gain? Um, and if, if the upside is more than the downside, I guess, you know, it becomes a no-brainer, right? Yeah. And I, you know, and I always believe when we serve from the highest intention, mm -hmm. the universe always have our back. Things happen in mysterious way. Seriously, Gavin, I have so many stories where while I'm going through the process, I wouldn't be able to read, but when I sit back and reflect, and I think this is one thing business owners do a lot, and those who are happy and successful, they're two different things, right? Yeah. To yeah. sit back and reflect and go, ah, this is, this is what I learned about me. Because really business is one of the, in my view, one of the best personal development program. Oh, 100%. And, it, and it's tailored to us and no one can replace it. No, that's very true. Very true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in fact, hmm. I'm, a big, I'm a big fan of people, you know, constantly learning and growing. If for no other yeah. reason, as human beings, we are inquisitive people. We are social creatures. We are, you know, we're here on this planet to, to learn, experience, grow, nurture, and help other people. Um, fundamentally, right? Now, if you, if you really truly believe that, you will forever, like you will treat the world as your playground you know, and, and just experience and learn and, and do things. Um, but life definitely presents challenges and oh, you know, you, the mind, the mind plays tricks on people. The, you know, mindset is a very funny thing, depending on who you hang around with um, and spend time. Mm. With. Uh, mm. I think it can influence you to a great uh, degree. Like, how's that, how's that been like a factor for you? Like in terms of the people you've been around from the early days, like how has that helped shape you to think the way you think? You know, it's, it's when I think back now, um, the people that I meet, people don't come to us by accident. Hmm. We really, I don't believe that. But on a, if, I, if I were to ask myself on a deeper question, now that, you know, you know, as you get a bit, or as I get a bit older, oh my God, heading towards my 50s, I'm a bit more conscious in my decision. Because in, in my younger days, you know, my younger days, we do things from an, for emotional needs. And we never know. And, you know, some people go meet, do things purely for survival and yeah. there's a place for it. Some people for security. And the security could be financially or emotionally. Some people do things for recognition. Mm -hmm. Some people like to do things because for independence. And yep. some people, those who has impact, and I'm not saying it has to be on a large scale, there's a t place for that. But when they consciously, when they can consciously do things knowing what they want, then they'll attract the right people. But it's not because people coming to us accidentally is because we have 
raise our vibration. We have raised our thinking and our emotional intelligence. You know, and that's a big thing as well. That's huge. Yeah, and uh, oh, in and I'm always grateful. I'm, I always say in life there are no enemies; they're only friends. Some that we can define as friends we recognise, and there are some people. They are friends in disguise who will push our button and challenge us. Oh but, my God, you know, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and and you sit back and you went, "Wow, okay, so, some, okay, well, what's this all about? What 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 is this all about?" Yeah. And I always jo- I always joke, you know, because I journal a lot, I read a lot. I always say, "This person made me a better person." Really, it, and yeah. that's why it makes us so fun. And I think you and I, was something we have in common is that we're so fascinated by people because, you know, one of my great mentors, I say, Amy, you cannot go right and you cannot go wrong. Life is a discovery. Just mm-hmm. go for it. Yeah, no, definitely. And in fact, you know, one of my mentors shared something very similar. He said, there's no right mm-hmm. or wrong. There's just outcomes. So at the end of the day, like whatever you do, like if you if you push something, you'll get a reaction. If you do something, you'll yes. get a result. If you don't do something, you'll still get a result. You know, yes. like action yes. or inaction will still create a result. It's up to you yes. what you want that result to look like. And yes. same, with, same with people. I mean, at, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. you know, you can choose to avoid people. You can you can choose to work with people. You can choose to help mm-hmm. people mm-hmm. or whatever. But you know, business is nothing more than serving other people in some form or the other because you 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 know you need people to interact with your business you need people to buy your products or services um or whatever it is you're offering you need people to help you in your business you need people to guide you in your business you need you know people are essential to business if you if you didn't get that then you're really missing one of the key parts i think in wanting to get into business. yeah yes and and you know as you mentioned that in in my business, you know, some people see it that I run a restaurant, mm-hmm. a Mexican restaurant. But for me, how I see my business is a cultural hub. I like how, that. And, and, and I see, and, and, I, and then I tell my customers and I tell my staff, I said, my business belongs to everyone. It just so happened, Alan and I run it, but it belongs everyone. That's, that's, and, I, and, I've been, and I've been doing it, some people get it, some people don't, but it's taken me a good 10 years mm. to for some, some people to get it. And, it, and the thing is, he, here's the thing, for people who, who just started business, it takes time. Yeah. It takes time to develop ourselves. It takes time and the patience to let things unfold naturally. And it also takes time for people to know us. But if our intention is to be, and, th- and this is only for me, everyone has their own answers. For me, what makes me excited is I love problem solving. Yeah. I love problem solving. And that's what business is, right? You, you can it define is. it as a service. Or the other way is it's problem solving. And you went, oh, this person has this. Uh, and if we really listen and we re- and Many people think, oh, how did you come with this idea? Most of the time, I'll be honest, Gavin, I don't come up with idea. I just sit back and I listen to the people I serve, whether it's from my staff, when it's from my suppliers, whether it's from my business partners. I just listen. And then you you put the the pieces together and you just like create that. something. Like yeah. But no, yeah. there's no such thing as new ideas, in my opinion. But we just do it in our style and no one can be us that's really great amy like uh because you know i talk to a lot of people every day that are like oh i'd love to get into business i just don't know what to do I'm, i just don't have that that idea that magic silver bullet and that, you know the one thing i always share with them is there is no perfect idea in fact you know there are probably a thousand things you could do you just have to do something you but but at the end of the day you don't have to do anything but if you're going to do anything, you might as well try and do something that has meaning or purpose, um, both yes. for yourself and for the people that you're going to serve. Because yes. I, I'll promise you one thing, business does have a lot of challenges. Like you said, it's it's the biggest personal development journey you'll ever go through. And when times get tough, 
you should really like or believe in what you're doing because if you don't like you know that's why most people give up they quit because well it's it's too hard or may i share something you know one thing i've learned and this is from my beautiful mentor he said when things go your way practice humility yeah things don't go what you're expecting or doesn't go your way practice gratitude when we have humility and gratitude we'll be all right yeah, yeah. That's, that's right, right. You know, that's wisdom that's that's actually very wise um I know. I agree. mentors are fantastic isn't it oh they are i mean i've got multiple mentors that help me oh. and mm. i could not be doing what i'm doing today if i didn't have the wisdom of people who have done things before to help me um just mm-hmm. navigate the unknown <laughs> so you know i think yeah. mentors are, are really great i mean some of the some of the most recognizable faces on the planet in terms of sport or business um mm. have mentors they have coaching teams they have entire mm. staff on, mm. their, on their side to help them to you know get mm. to the level because you know this is it goes back to what you were saying amy it's all about people working with people and supporting each other yes that's right no, I love that. So, so tell me a little bit, you know, so obviously when you, you got started in business, now you've been in business 17 years, but I, I'm sure yeah. in the early days it would have been, you know, right now you probably have a lot of things like, you know, set and you're still working on, on your business. But in the yeah. early days, it would have been quite challenging, I imagine. So what were some of those early challenges as you were starting a, a young family and all of that? Like what were, what was oh some of God, so let me cast my mind back. I feel like yeah. going down memory lane, but I have no regrets. I have no regrets. Yeah. I think when I started, when, when I actually, you know, be involved in the business and we started off as a franchise. Right. So in a way, we bought a franchise and that worked for us because both Al and I don't really have a business um, framework, right? Or both of, both of our families never done business. Or they do do business, but in the traditional sense. Right. And, and that's a different story, right? Yeah. So obviously, yeah. we've gotten to the franchise. We kind of know the model, adapted their model mm-hmm. and the marketing. And here, here's one big mistake I made. Oh, my goodness. I tried to do everything. And I tried to please everyone. Yeah. I want to please my customers. I have to please my Oh my God, my, my my staff! So prank that they don't, you know, they won't walk out on me. Yeah. And and, and that there were so many self doubts. There were so many self doubts. And I remember my and then by then my I had two kids early days, you know, and I re, and I specifically remembered and this was a turning point for me, Gav. Yeah. We were in a little we moved premise, okay, but our first premise it was a little tiny little rectangle box I call it. And my two boys were sitting in the kitchen in the back in front of a hot water system. My God, if that oh, thing blew up, yep. Yeah. And there was in front of a laptop and it clicked. And I said, and I said, Amy, you have to change. You have to do something different. You cannot do this. You cannot allow your kids and your, your husband to be like, and, and I'll tell you something, when we just got into business, you know, when Alan started, um, his father passed away. And so oh. that was a whole new thing. It was like starting a business and we got with young kids, you know, his, his dad passed away. My, and, I, and, and I remember one time, I haven't seen my kids for three weeks. I just mm-hmm. literally handed over to the aunt. And then I got to the point, I go, no, Amy, you cannot, you cannot continue doing, walking this path. Yeah. This is your life. No way. No way. Mm-hmm. And then I got smarter. And then I got smarter. I said, okay, Amy, if you're in this, learn the game. If you want to change the game, learn the rule, then change the rule. That works yeah. for you. That's so many people, many people, they complain a lot. Oh, my God, this doesn't work. They don't end up thinking. I'm like, well, you don't have to be in the game. But if you want to play a game that works for you, know the rule. I mean, play by the law, but the rules are negotiable. Of course. And this is, and this is life, right? Yeah. If you love it, continue. If you don't love it, don't do it. It's, it's that simple. That's it's that simple. Yeah. And so, yeah, and then a few years later, and then, you know, we build up our confidence. You know, we, we both, Al and I, grew, you know, as people, as, as business partners. Mind yeah. you, that affected our marriage as well. Yeah. 
And that's when the time said, okay, there is, the, the, we need to create space where we're just husband and wife. We need yeah. to create space as friends. And yeah. I think that is very important. And then we need to create space when we are, we are physically present as parents to our sons. Mm. We very have good. to. Very it's clear. A lot, you know. a lot of things to, it, it's a lot of things to think about and manage. And all mm. you just mentioned are uh, mm. things that, I see, you know, a lot of businesses fail um, mm. you know, because yeah, the minute uh, the minute something becomes too difficult or too hard or challenging, ah, oh, it's not for me. It didn't work out. And then what happens mm. is, you know, mm. pe people like to hang around like-minded people. So if let's say I had a bad experience in my business, you know, well, I'll go and tell my best friend, yeah, you know what, that didn't really work out. Now, what do you think? or you know mm. that wasn't for me or it's too hard what do you think that that's going to do to the person i just said that to that's going to put their confidence down into wanting to try that idea or try a business or something and so there's a lot of unfortunately um perception that's going around amy where people think business is very risky and 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 you know you 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 know by going down this path it's like the path of no return and and all and what i say to people is look it's not it's like anything else there are no guarantees with anything in life. You could have a job, but you could lose your job. <laughs> the, hard, the hardest journey leads to the best destination, Gavin. I like that. I do. I love that. I, I really believe that. Yeah. And what is more, I don't know. I, I, I just think life, life is an adventure. Life is yeah. like, you know what? I, I feel for me, life is like a holiday. And I'm used, I'm used to this metaphor, life is a holiday. Most people, some people, will go on holiday to escape from their day-to-day -day grind. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then they join this tour and they expect everything to be perfect. Right? And yeah. then they go, oh, my God, the, if the plane's delayed, they'll be complaining. If, if nothing, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Right? There's yeah. always something. Have I got stories? But then... What if you switch it around? What if, this, what if your day-to-day -day things that you do is your holiday? How exciting would that be? That's a great way to look at life. That's, it's just a great way to, to be, I think, because then it removes all the pressure, removes all the expectations, yes. you know. And, and, and you're, you're actually right. Like a lot of people who live busy, stressful lives, they go on this holiday and they are hoping and praying for everything to go smoothly and perfectly because they need it. They need it so badly, like oxygen. And then the minute something goes wrong, it's like, yep, I knew it. This always happens to me. You know, <laughs> this happened and that happened. They can't wait to tell the whole world. They have a big rant on Facebook or something. And um, and I was, you know, I... Sorry, I have to laugh. It's funny. It's funny. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not disrespecting those people, but when I see no, no, I it's, no, I know, but I, I, it's it's interesting when you see it because it, I, it, like you said, it's just switching it around in your mind and thinking, well, yeah, why why create the situation where you desperately need to get out of your space to have a break? Mm -hmm. If you can change it around so that you start enjoying the space you're in, you start accepting everything that's happening. There's a reason why it's happening. There's a purpose. It's your, it's your, you're there now to figure it out and make it work for you rather than trying to fight the system. Um, then I think life is a lot more enjoyable. It becomes a challenge, and challenges sometimes are fun. You know, it's like it's a puzzle that you want to solve. It's opportunities. You know, some people yeah. see things as challenges. I see potential. Or yeah, and, better and This is what, this what excites me. There is nothing for me. Nothing more exciting when you have an idea. Right mm -hmm. after you know you, you listen to your customers, you listen to all the people around, you, but you don't listen to everyone. You you listen to the people you know that have substance, right? Yeah. And then you sit back and the, and you relax. You just relax, and then something click. Now mm -hmm. here's the fun bit. I go, okay, I can see this, and, I, and then you start to just take one step at a time. Just take one step at a time. You know, one of the, one of my early days, I always think, you know. It's like, oh my God, I need to go from zero to a hundred overnight. <laughs> that that is recipe for disaster and disappointment, yeah. and you'll fool everyone around you. Yeah. Right. Yep. And just like, and, and then you, you turn that idea into reality. And do you know what's even more beautiful, Gavin? What's that? Sometimes people attract to us or buy our service, or not because of the product, 
it's because of our energy oh, and the reason behind it. Yes. And when the purpose is not just purely for ourselves, but it benefits other people, there, there is no objection. There is absolutely no objections. Yeah. And they jump on board and then it creates momentum. And that's yep. when change happens. Yes. And I think this is what, and, and, I, and now I'm getting really excited. And, and, I, and, and you know, it's very interesting. I mean, recently I was talking to a professor, right? this professor of finance, mm -hmm. professor of finance, right? He travels the world, do talks, and he's having issues on something. And because of COVID and everything, I had so much time. And he taught me something, or he highlighted something. And I've been there myself. One yeah. of the sources of frustration or disappointment is that things don't live up to our expectations because yeah. in our little mind, in our mind, inside us, we, we have this picture, mm. what it's things supposed to be. And there are constructs, constructs we create from ourselves and there is social constructs, social constructs on business, how like, to be successful, I need to fulfill, I need to compare myself with the Joneses, right? So it's oh, I know, right? I know the feeling really the Joneses, well. the Lees, the Sings, the, I don't know, Sierra, the Gavins. Yep. And then, and then, and then you, we all have different roles in life, you know, where we're partners, we're, we're, we're mothers, we're daughters. That, and the thing is, these roles, when we have these expectations and roles and we don't fulfill, we get frustrated. And then I think back, I said, who are the Joneses? Really, who are the Joneses? Maybe it's just a, a figment of our imagination, a collective imagination that don't even exist. Oh, and so I thought, yeah, I bet you the Joneses are looking and going, I wish I was like Amy, or I wish I was like, you know, someone. Yeah. And they're probably and trying I'm to sure. compete without the, with someone else. But yeah, you're and then I'm thinking that. the Joneses will, will go, oh, exactly like, I want to be like the Gavins. And well, then the Gavins will be with the Joneses. I'm like, I know, it's crazy, yeah. right? It's, but I think this topic of expectations is such a big, big thing. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I've got I've got people who I know have done TED talks on this exact topic of expectations and managing yeah. expectations and and you're right it literally comes down to that in fact almost almost everything we do the way we we judge people or the way we judge ourselves is based on the expectations that are placed on ourselves or that we have in our mind that construct that you talked about and so I guess I wanted to to pick pick your brain a little bit because you know obviously. Um, you have made this transition, but you you have this mindset of mm. of just um, you know really like no, nothing will stop you, or or you're just you're happy to keep working through uh, mm. things, and um, which which is an amazing amazing ability to be able to do that. But let's say a lot of people that are listening to this right now, they might be thinking, yeah, Amy, but your life's not as hard as mine. Or, you know, like you don't live where I live or you don't have to, you know, do this for your kids. And all. But, but I'm sure you have because, you know, it's, you are a family person. You do have um, kids. You have gone through all of the things. Like you said, your, your, your husband's um, mother even passed away at the early stages of, of when you guys were in. I mean, lots of things like that. I mean, you've gone through the challenges that most families go through. And, yeah. and still will. And, and, you know, life will still happen to you, right? Yeah. But it's not going to stop you, is it? No. Life happens for us, not to us. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. yeah. And tell me, have you got a, um, a community uh, of people that are kind of like-minded, you know, that like yourself, that you like to hang around or associate with? Obviously, you've got your friends, you've got your family. Sometimes, mm -hmm. um, you know, our family and our friends don't quite understand the journey we're on. And you've heard this saying, you know, you're the average of the five closest people you hang yeah. around. And so yeah. did you ever make a conscious effort or do you believe, you, you know, people listening to this should make a conscious effort if they want to get somewhere, try and find people that are in that space mm -hmm. or even, you know, moving towards that so that you, you, you can gravitate over time there mm -hmm. uh, rather than staying fixed and, and you need to get out of that comfort mm -hmm. zone. Mm, good question. Yeah. Yes and no. This is the stage where I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And I'm very um, conscious of the people I interact with. 
and mm. different people meet our needs for different reasons. For example, we have acquaintances, mm -hmm. uh, we just go out for a coffee. You know, the, the time and place for that, not everything has to be so serious. Yeah. And then there are people, here's the two things I've been playing with, the, the, the concept of competency and care. Okay. We meet, we meet people who are very competent, but it doesn't mean they'll care for you the way you want them to. Yeah. And then there are people who care for you, but they may not have the competency to help you. So my, how I overcame that is I cannot find, and I have no expectation now to find one group of people or one person that fulfill my needs. Because you know why, Gavin? I can't even do that to another person. <laughs> and this is always a memento. If I can't do it, I don't expect anyone to do it. Yeah. Really, right? Sure so, so, you know, I have a group of friends because I, I love books. So I, made a, I have a group of friends that we discuss books on personal development. And then there's times where I specifically that is skill-based, project-based. So lately I'm into um, iPhone food to photography because I love art and I was in performing art. Yeah. So then I just hang out with those groups, you yeah. know. Yeah. And then I have friends who are business like-minded people. And then I have some crazy friends. <laughs> you need so, yeah, yeah. But you they're crazy. crazy. But they're crazy. They have to be crazy thinking they are movers and shakers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It'd be unreasonable. You've got to be crazy to do things like that. Yeah. yeah. But, but it's so important. It is so important. But one thing I've learned um, is I have no expectations. I have no expectations because to me, expectation is an outcome, an expected outcome. Have a vision, work for it, but be open for change because okay. I feel, I feel. That Oh, see, that's the sign, that's the universe sign. Did I say yes? That's right. <laughs> that was a nice little piece. <laughs> yeah, because I feel our, I mean, our, our mind, our brain is beautiful. We, we, we haven't even tapped into the potential of our mind, but there is a universe that is much greater, that is beyond our consciousness. So if we hold on to everything within our logic, I reckon we miss out half the fun. You know, you know, always, you know, there's a saying that um, we create things twice. First yep. is the conscious, and then becomes reality. I, I believe it happens three times. Okay. First is the subconscious, without even us knowing, because there is, there is the possibilities. Then it becomes conscious. Then it becomes reality. Yeah, there's a, there's really, um, there's a progression, isn't there? Really. Um, and I, 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 where I relate to that is, you know, a book that I read many, many years mm. ago. In fact, it was even, I even watched the video called The Secret. Yes. Um, and you, I'm sure you've heard of it. And uh, they talked about the law of attraction, you know, and mm -hmm. one of the things they mentioned was, if you want something bad enough, you've got to, you've got to envision it. You've got to almost, um, you know, see it in your thoughts, see it clearly, see it happening. Mm -hmm. And, and, you project that energy forward, but they, you know, you got to take it one step forward. You know, people like, yes. uh, and that, that was Bob Proctor and, and Dr. John yes. D. Martini and all these guys. And then people like Tony Robbins, for example, would say, well, having good thoughts is one thing, but you need to yes. take action as well to move those thoughts into some sort of a reality. Right. And um, yeah, I'm sure you've, you've done like yeah, that. may I share another perspective? Yes. And I actually met one of the author, Michael Bexworth, and mm -hmm. I had a really good conversation with him. It was by, well, not again, you know, synchronicity. Yes, I agree that we need to raise our vibration and we, to have that mindset, you know, to utilise our five senses, but that's just on a physical level, right? Yeah. And then obviously you, you need to back up with the actions, right? You've you got to, you can only think, but if you're not taking action, and, you know, life is not Uber. You don't just order it lands on your doorstep. <laughs> right, just by success. You know, someone told me that. I thought that is so good metaphor. Yeah. Then I spoke to uh, Michael Beck's work. All right, and he's I think he's in one of that too in, in the secret. I, I I was very blessed. I, I got to meet him and ask him so many questions. Yeah. And if, there was one step further, Amy. And some people may not get it in the secret. Okay, we've got the mindset. We've got the the action taking. 
but it goes now, the next step and the deepest, and it starts from there, is your sense of being. Yes. Become what you want to be. Mm. And, one of, and one of this person said, Amy, in order, many people want to be authors, right? Authors, authors. Yes. But to be an author, you've got to think like an author. Yes. You've got to be like an author. And when you embrace that, that full immersion, and take the right action with the right mindset, nothing can go, things will flow naturally. 100%, yeah. Well, we're all energetic beings, you know, and, and um, at the end of the day, like you, you mentioned vibration several times, there was a, a again, and books, there, there's a great book out there that I read, oh, gee, I read this when I was maybe 19 or 20. Mm. It was called The Celestine Prophecy. I don't know if you've heard of it. Oh, my God, I love that book. <laughs> and that was the first, first time I ever got exposed to the idea that we vibrate at different levels. I mean, when you think about it, it's true, you know, and... All, uh, yes. Yeah. All yeah. levels of frequency exist. It's whether we choose which one to tap into. Yes, yes. And, you know, sorry, I'll, I'll let you finish. No, 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 continue. I think yeah. we're saying the same thing. Yeah. yeah. And here, here is my thought. You know, they say the universe has so much space. Even within our body, our cellular level, the space, there is so much space, right? There is more space than matter. And then I came to, this is just a thought in Amy's world, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, the reason, po po one possibility why there is so much space is when we look at from a scientific level, right? On a, and what is mass? It's all these little vibrations happening so fast, it becomes 3D in our eye. Yeah. And that's why it's possible in the universe, even in our body, there is space. So there is room, there is room for our ideas and our energy to form. And it, and it really makes sense because, you know, there's a saying, whatever you focus, it grows. Oh, 100%. It, we can almost think ourselves into reality. Yes. You know, it, it's like if you think you're going to be sick, I guarantee you, you will be sick. Yes. <laughs> right, there is no, and, but, the, but the funny thing is, you know, the funny thing is we are our thoughts, yet we're also not our thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Right. We, are, we are our feelings, yet we're not, we're also not our feelings. Yeah. We are our body, yet we're no longer our body. And I think that's why these wise people can see, you know, can see because average person, and I can only speak for myself, you know, the reason I have in the past, you know, I have to be competitive because I thought in order for me to win, someone has to lose. No, there's an alternative. It's mm -hmm. called collaboration. Yes. 100%. And for me to be right, someone has to be wrong. No, it's because I almost have to put my reference externally to see myself. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be that way. And I know that's why wise people, you know, my mentors and books, authors, they're able to see both sides, of, the two sides of the same coin. It just depends which perspective you want to take. Yeah, that's and true. And everyone's perspective are right. Well, that's exactly right. And you know what? I, I like the fact that you said, you know, um, for mm. one person to win, the other person doesn't have to lose. Um, why can't both people win? And if we come from that perspective, you know, we, we're always looking to help other people because one of my mentors, in fact, there's a, and I'm not sure if he was the one who actually said this, but maybe it was a borrowed quote. But uh, mm -hmm. if you if you help him, there's a there's a person called Jim Rohn. Have you heard of Jim Rohn? Oh, love him. <laughs> he, he wrote this book. He wrote um the season of life. Yes, yeah, so Jim, Jim Rohn. Book. Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn. R O H N. Are we yeah. talking about the same author? Yes. He wrote this a very small thin book. Four seasons of life. And seriously, I read that oh, book amazing. so many times. Yeah. It's, it's yeah it's amazing oh. well, well yeah. He, he, one of the things yeah. he said and i'm not sure if he was the one who made it up but let's let's give him some credit for it anyway yes yeah, of course he actually yeah. said if you help enough people get what they want you can have everything you want and so at the end of the day you know rather than thinking me 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 it's like well how can i make a difference especially if you're listening to this podcast right now and obviously you're hearing mm -hmm. amy and, and myself talking about all these different topics and you're thinking mm -hmm. well what could I do that's going to help me and my family? That 
that's so you're thinking you know i would challenge you to expand your thinking in terms of what could you do given your talent given your experience given your gifts and all the things that you mm -hmm. have well, which all of us have unique abilities so spending some time to think about that how could you make someone's life better how could you solve a problem? How could you provide a solution or improve on an existing solution? What can you do to make the world a little bit better for someone else out there through a product or a service or whatever you, you decide you need to do? But how can that make a difference? And if you do that to enough people, it will all come back to you yeah. many, many times. And that, that was one of the things I learned many years ago. And it, it, yeah. Every time I think of it, Amy, it, it's, it reinforces why I do what I do. And, and I guess yeah. with what you're doing, you're not just yeah. in the restaurant business anymore because providing food to someone on a plate would be the lowest level of service you could probably provide. And, you know, someone could do that next door for probably half the price. But you're, you're yeah. actually providing a community and you're providing all these yeah. other elements, which I think is fantastic. So, yeah. so well done on at least, you know, expanding that, that thought process and, and trying to help and teach other people that same th philosophy. Oh, my pleasure. You know, and I, I just want to add on to that, and you explain it so eloquently, you know, with so much wisdom, um, Gavin. You know, I would say at the end of the, t end of the night, I ask myself two questions, and I'll do this, and I've been doing it for a long time. I say two things. What is the one person, have I helped anyone today after they meet me, but leave with a smile? That's yeah. all I ask them. And when I go to a place where I've been, has it been a little bit better? Mm. Right? That's it. Yeah. And, you know, and I really believe, you know, Eckhart Tolle, you know, his book, The Power of Now. The magic is now. Mm -hmm. Even when, you know, when we had so many restrictions and curfews in Victoria, da, 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 there's always opportunity. Okay, I may not be able to have table service. You know what I did, Gavin? I pushed my red couch right at the front near my coffee machine, right? So when a customer, that was my coffee couch. <laughs> Customers sit down while they're making their coffee. But, you know, I was, it was a privilege to listen to them. Yeah. yeah. Listen to them. And, you know, many people say, oh, what can I do? What's my talent? da da da, -da. I always say, well, what makes, what brings you joy? Yeah. What brings you joy? And also, if you really, if you really want to help the other person, actually, help is not even the word because when some, here's here's my thoughts. Help is almost like seeing the other person as powerless. Yeah, that's a really some way. Point. You know, it's a bit. I mean, what's a, a, a it's a funny energy. You know, <laughs> just ask them. Just ask them. What can I do for you? Hmm. I actually went through a week asking, you know, what can I do for you? Sometimes what we they want may be not what I think they want. Sometimes some some people just go, can you just listen? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll give you that space. I'll give you that. I'll create that space. Yeah. Some pe people at the end of the day just want to be heard and seen. Yes, yes. Yeah. Very, very awesome, awesome um, advice to, I guess, anyone can do this. So, you know, if you feel you don't have any ideas, you don't have any creative spark, you, you're, you know, you, you're thinking mm. this is a lot of pressure to come up with an idea for a business and that's what's holding you back. I, I would recommend you do exactly what Amy just suggested. Just talk to people, ask them questions, ask them how you're going, mm. are you stuck, is there anything I can do to help? How could I help you? Is there anyone I can? Is there anything I can point like point you in a, a particular direction? Or because sometimes just asking questions, but asking, you know, not asking oh, I guess yes. silly questions. They 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 are they are tailored to a degree, but they're caring. They're, they're coming from a, a space mm. of compassion, and it's not oh, um, like you, you you actually said, mm. Amy, you're not helping people for the because you think that they are um, in a less fortunate. Yeah, mm. Mm. Not, it's providing yourself as a as a service. Um, you know, you're there to serve others, and so how could you serve someone? 
because you could be making coffee for someone and that person could be a multi-millionaire, runs 10 businesses. Or, oh, my God. You, have, you don't have, know. We don't know. We never know. know. You don't we know. We never know. My goodness. And so yeah. they don't need anything from you except maybe your year <laughs> for like five minutes, yeah. you know, to, to, to share a story. Or, or, you know, as, you know, I keep on talking about, you know, the past eight months. And sometimes, you know, and we all have our own definition of success, but I must say, and I haven't told anyone, and so this is the first time, and, you know, and I'll share this with Gavin and, and the audience. There's sometimes we do things that may not be public recognised. Mm -hmm. We may not always get the awards. We may not always get, you know, the figures or the, you know, the numbers adds up. But if it's meaningful and you can change a person's life, I think it's worth it. And let me share, and um, uh, in the past eight months, I, I would like to say, you know, I have put in my two cents contribution from saving a, a man from committing suicide. Wow. I have helped someone through a divorce, not necessarily to save the marriage, but to make peace with himself. Yeah. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. So we never know. We never know who we could touch and we never know who will come into our life and touch us but we just have to stay open with open mind open heart and miracles are miracles are here we're here how wonderful is this gavin you and i you're in south australia i'm in melbourne of all the i don't know eight billion people on this planet right now i'm talking with you yeah I think that's pretty special it is yeah. pretty, it's, it's amazing actually so I, all the stuff that you've shared today with us, Amy, has been really insightful. I mean, I'm 100% on board with the, the message that you're putting out there. I really love the fact that you embrace um, the, these philosophies and, you know, and that you're, you're kind enough to share your thoughts with our audience because there's a lot of people who don't, they don't know what they don't know. And, and you know, when they mm. come to a, a podcast like this and they listen for the first time, they're hearing some of these concepts or ideas hopefully it will get them on a path of discovery and then they can yeah. explore for themselves. And like you said, life's full of possibilities. And the minute you embrace that, you know, it, it's literally a never ending rabbit hole of things you can discover, <laughs> you know? And so it's like, a, it's like Alice in Wonderland. You get to play in this wonderland that's full of surprises and yeah. discover. So um, on that note, what I want to do is um, I'm looking at the time and, and, I'm, and I'm conscious. I want to uh, get to this section, which I do with all of my guests. It's called a rapid response section. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. a little bit of fun. We've sort of touched yeah. on some of these things already, but, you know, I'm just going to shoot a couple of questions to you. And I just want to kind of see what, what springs to mind quickly when you put Amy under a little bit of um, um, pressure. Uh, and um, yeah. I just shoot from the hip. Are you happy to do that? Absolutely. I'll, I'll just speak from my heart. So I, I can't which is, my head no, which is Which is perfect. And again, no right or wrong, but tell me, sure. Amy, what is your favourite mode of learning? Like, how do you learn? I'm a visual learner. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And um, do you have a, a favourite role model or a hero, someone that you look up to? You can have more than one. Oh, okay. If it's a Disney character, it's Mulan. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, love Mulan. That, that, just says, that just says it all, doesn't it? It does. Um, I, and my high school mentor, who, who already passed away, but when I was 13, he was the very first person who saw something in me. Wow. Amazing. Mm. Amazing. All right. And um, we've talked about uh, quotes and, and, and things like that have, and books. Is there a favourite quote or you know a line that just always sticks out for you that you remember that you like you'd like to share maybe if you have one. okay yeah. okay my quote and i live by it no fun no play oh perfect <laughs> <I> like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that have to be amy you know no that fun no play. Like you amy that doesn't sound like you at all <laughs> okay of course not. it's so simple right <laughs> yeah no i love that that's very simple but Gee, the, the words to live by, really. Um, yeah. Now, you've talked about, you know, causes and things that you've supported and people you've helped. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular cause or a charity or, or something that you'd like to give a shout out to um, that, you know, you're involved with? Uh, with uh, yes. Uh, I, I, yes. I've 
I've been very privileged to be involved in many charities, um, but one thing that stood out for me is the um, Our Heart Foundation, uh -huh. which is a Victorian-based organisation to promote the awareness and education of um, heart issues, heart diseases in women, which is the number one killer, by the way, not cancer, yeah. Yeah. heart disease. Fantastic. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's awesome. Awesome that you, you're supportive of a cause like that. And yeah. Amy, for our audience who don't know uh, you, you know, apart from what you've shared today, um, is there something a little bit quirky that you'd like to, you know, share with people? Um, just so you, you know, people can go, oh, okay, she's a little bit weird, but you know, we. we oh, we can't with <laughs> only one thing. I've done so many crazy weird things. Um, I would say one of the craziest things that I've done, it only happened last year, mm -hmm. you know, leading to 2020, is um, I, managed, I managed to get up my passport because my passport was expired as I was entering, you know, the terminal. I managed to get my passport within four hours and that is a journey in itself. Oh, I believe you. I, I... Yeah, but... There's another story to it, but that, that calls for another day, yes. Yeah. But while I was having a knee infection, oh, my, yes. Oh. So, see, yes. everyone is listening to, to you, Amy. I mean, Amy's a real person. She's got her challenges. She's been through the ups and downs of life, still going through it, and is a business mm. owner and made the decision to, you know, make that shift from corporate, even though there were a lot of challenging things happening around her, um, but she embraced it and has really, you know, taken it in a stride and, and gone to the next level. And if anything, Amy, I think your story is really inspiring for not just myself, but um, I'm sure a lot of the people that are listening, because I want you to, I want you to be inspired by this story, guys, and, you know, believe that anything is possible because it is. And uh, mm -hmm. with that, Amy, I just want to thank you for being our guest uh, today. And if people who are in Melbourne or Victoria, um, I want to learn a little bit about your restaurant or maybe you have a group that expands beyond the geographic boundary. What's the yes. best way for them to get in touch with you? Like how can people find out about yourself? Certainly. So, you know, if you're in Melbourne, because, yay, we can go beyond 25 Ks now. Um, I warmly invite you know, the audience, you know, to come to Amor Mexico in Blackburn. Um, it's an exciting place. Yeah, it involves art, it involves food, it involves entertainment, and there is so much to be created. And I would love whoever's listening to be in, involved. Um, you can find us on our website, amoremexico.com.au. And awesome. I just want to say, Gavin, thank you so much for this opportunity um, to connect with you, to have this wonderful morning conversation. And it's been a blast. And who knows what could happen from here. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Thank you, Amy. Thanks once again. And um, you, and uh, hopefully we'll touch base very soon. Absolutely. Thank you. Bye. Right. Thank you. If you like this podcast and would like to understand a little bit more about what was just discussed, then you're in luck. Simply head over to breakfreefromcorporate.com and we have a fantastic bonus gift waiting for you to download. All we ask in return is that you leave us a review on iTunes and or Stitcher, whichever you use. And lastly, help us share this podcast around with your friends, your colleagues through Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus or LinkedIn. We truly appreciate all your support and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Thank you for listening to this podcast episode of Break Free From Corporate. Once again, to access previous and all future episodes, visit breakfreefromcorporate.com and subscribe today.